Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. Good day and welcome back to the Valder BB Show as I move on to my next guest. My next guest will be talking about the American, um, uh, African Americans and cancer. So listen very, very closely. I've got Woody and I've got Shelly Fold Nasso here in my uh, studio. Shelly is the CEO of the National Coalition for Cancer Survivorship. And Woody, he's an equity, he's an uh, osteosarcoma survivor and health equity advocate. Welcome, guys, t- to the Valder BB Show. Thanks so much Thank for you. having us. And uh, Woody, I hope I said that word right, osteosarcoma? Correct? Yeah, osteosarcoma, yes. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you both for being here. Woody, I'm going to start off with you. Tell us about, give us an encapsulation of your journey with cancer and the inequity you faced in getting care. Yeah, as a nine-year-old um, kid, I was a runner, so I was chasing the wind. And then all of a sudden, there appeared a lump on my left thigh, uh, right above the, the knee. Um, and I was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, which is a rare form of bone cancer. Um, now I had, it was 60 years ago when I was diagnosed and the hospital where I was treated um, had what was called a colored ward. So it was where all the black people were placed in the basement of the hospital. So my neighbors were women having babies, um, older people, children, um, infectious diseases, the whole bailiwack, and we were all there together. So for 30 days, I looked at a windowless concrete wall. Um, It's unfortunate that um, I had that experience, um, but I think uh, still health equities still do exist um, when it comes to cancer survivorship. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You know, you make it seem like it's today, not far away. I want to move on to Shelly. I would like to know, your organization recently conducted an annual survey on the state of cancer survivorship. Tell me what it revealed and tell me about the disparities that that Woody mentioned. Yes, yeah, so we've come a long way from, from the days that Woody talked about, but there are still um, disparities in, in access to care and in, in the quality of care that, that different people receive. We launched our 2021 State of Cancer Survivorship Survey this week, and we surveyed people from around the country, all different races and types of cancer and ages, and tried to understand better their experience with their cancer treatment and their, their lives post-treatment. And we found that Black and and Latino patients felt uh, were less likely to say that the care that they received was excellent, and they were also less likely to say that they felt respected by their healthcare teams. And we also saw disparities in some of the physical side effects of cancer, and in the emotional effects and the support from family, and also in uh, some of the financial issues like being able to maintain work. We're grateful to Bristol Myers Squibb for supporting our survey, and I think it's really important data on the, the fact that these health disparities still exist today. In in the disparities that disparities that exist today, do more people of color pass away, or do they just languish? The death rates are definitely higher, and the American Cancer Society puts out their statistics, their facts and figures every year, and the death rates are higher for African-American cancer survivors. Yes. Usually when people experience discrimination or disparities, they become advocates, and I know you've become an advocate. What 
are you working on to kind of bring this to the forefront and make this equitable for other people living with cancer? Well, about 35 years ago, my sister, who's a certified tumor registrar, encouraged me to become um, active when it came to cancer advocacy. So it started um, to raise funds for um, people with cancer for to help with their treatment. Um, also, participate in peer review co um, committees and uh, the awarding of research grants. Because if you're at the table um, with these grants, you're able to affect change. And I think that's that's what we need to do more. We need to be at the table and we need to be representative. Um, the other thing that I've done was to um, put together a PowerPoint, which I've presented to our local medical center about health equity, and also speak to various um, service groups in my area. Shelly, as I wrap up, where can cancer survivors and their loved ones go to get more information, to hear about other survivors, to hear about the advocacy work that Woody is doing? So survivorshiptoday.com is an excellent resource to learn more about the stories of people like Woody and others and how they've navigated their cancer treatment and their lives after cancer and to find hope and resources, both for cancer patients and survivors and their families. I want to thank you, Shelly, and I especially want to thank you, Woody. I'm so sorry for the things you had to endure because they've never gone away from your memory. You know, some things you just can't unsee. But thank you for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for having us, Valder. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show broadcast on radio and television. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.